Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be working with some blue foam, some expanded polystyrene foam. Uh, and it's a material that you'll commonly find in most hardware stores in the construction area. And it's used as an insulation foam in most countries. Uh, in some places it's blue, in some places it's pink or purple. But as long as it's expanded poly polystyrene foam, it should be great. Uh, we'll be using some rasps to do some rough shaping uh, of our parts. I like to, to use these pointy rasps because it allows me to get into small crevices but uh, standard flat rasps should do just fine. We'll also be using different grades of sandpaper uh, going from 80 grit up to 220 grit and maybe even 400 grit depending on your, your surface needs for your prototype. Uh, we will also be using a hot wire cutter with a couple different attachments. Most of these cutters are very similar. Uh, most of them have a wand and it connects to different uh, accessories with a plug type connector like this. So most accessories have uh, this type of plug connector that uh, clicks in place. Uh, this is the wire cutter that you'll be using most of the time. It uses nichrome wire that's stretched. It should be uh, should have enough tension so that it uh, moves through, through the foam without um, bending, but should also have not, not as much tension that it'll break. If you need to replace this wire, most uh, kits come with a little bit. You can buy rolls of this nichrome wire, and you can use something like a wire cutter or just a nail clipper to cut it and then wrap it around when you're replacing it. Make sure that uh, before connecting any accessories, the on switch is in the uh, off position so that you're, you don't have any current flowing through. And then you can click your accessories uh, into the port. Make sure they go in all the way and they're firmly secured in place. This is another type of hot wire cutter. This is a tabletop cutter that gives you a you know, flat surface, a stable surface to cut on. It's the same concept. There's uh, a nichrome wire that's stretched uh, and, and there's a roll of it here. This particular uh, one uses a tensioning system here with a screw and this uh, roll of wire. Uh, it uses an AC adapter, goes into the wall, then it's connected to your unit. There's a small on-off switch here. You flip it on and then the wire will get hot and you can start cutting after just a few seconds. Uh, this particular cutter also has an angle adjustability, so you can actually move the wire to any angle you desire to make, let's say, a 45 degree cut. If you, can, if you wanna use that to join some pieces, for example, you might do that. Uh, this cutter also has this fence that allows you to uh, cut material in a straight form. You can move this fence along and just make a very straight cut. So uh, again, after a few seconds, you can start cutting. Uh, you should use only enough pressure to move through the material uh, so that you're not deforming the wire too much. You're not going to break the wire. You have to be very patient with using these hot wire cutters. They have a very firm hand. If you linger too long, you're going to make a hole in your piece that you don't want, but you want to use a smooth motion with just enough force. Um, and again, you can adjust the fence on these um, um, tabletop cutters to any precise measurement that you have. So this is aluminum part here is the fence and I can move my parts along here. I can adjust these to be any exact size that I need. I can use a caliper to measure it exactly or follow the, the markings here on my table. And then I can run my part through and again, smooth, even pressure. And I can create a part that is exactly the size that I need it to be and that it's nice and square. Uh, if I need that uh, to be square. I've traced both the side view and the top view of the part that I want to cut onto my piece of foam, and I'm gonna freehand cut these uh, lines here. So I'm gonna start with my side profile here. I'm gonna follow my line, and I've traced my part here to be slightly larger than the final result that I want because I need to give myself some space to do some shaping and some roughing up with the uh, rasp and the sandpaper. So I cut one side here. I'm gonna save this part. This is gonna be useful in just a second. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this second profile here. Again, just with moderate pressure, very smoothly, single motion, not stopping, but also not pushing too hard. I've removed both sides. And I'm actually now gonna take these sides that I've saved, I'm gonna put them back together with my shape. 
And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to uh, have my block back together so I can use this block as a reference to cut the top view of my part, this sort of elliptical shape here on the top. So I need my entire block to be able to do that. So I grab it together, I line it up, and now I'm going to do a freehand cut uh, on the top uh, surface here, and I'll be able to trace this ellipse shape around. And be very mindful of where your uh, hands are because this is again a hot wire and you don't want to uh, have this touch your finger You can see the amount of smoke that's coming out of, of this um, Cutter here and it's always good to wear some kind of protective gear I uh, I wear a respirator when I do these cuts and n 95 respirator uh, You can do these in a well ventilated place do it outside if you can um, And just make sure you're not breathing in these fumes now I have my part that's being cut and I have both the top and side views uh, cut precisely. You don't need the tabletop cutter to achieve this result. You can also use the handheld cutter to do the same thing. I'm going to trace here a block of material again that I'm going to use for my second part. So I'm just going to cut something that's nice and square by using my um, square here as a reference, my square ruler. Um, and just going to trace lines all around as, as reference, both on the top, the side views, the back view, everywhere that I need a reference to just be able to you know, create a, a, a square of a cut as you can with a handheld cutter. That is completely achievable. All right, so I have my handheld cutter uh, turned on, heating up, uh, let it heat up for, for a minute. And then with a very firm uh, hand, no, firm motion, uh, using all of my lines as reference, I'm going to create a cut here. Uh, that's going to be as straight as I can. Uh, you'll need some practice to get this just right, uh, but it'd be com it can be completely usable. Now, be bear in mind that uh, this type of cutter, of course, you can only fit you know, that much material into the arc, so you don't might be able to, to to make very large cuts with this. You might be having to resort to, to a knife uh, to make some of the more um, rough cuts, but it's completely achievable to create a result that's um, almost as nice as the table cutter and that's good enough for me to actually go and draw my design onto and create the, the next steps for this piece. So I've come back to this piece and I've traced both the, the side and top views of the part that I'm trying to cut uh, and again I've flipped on my um, cutter here and laid it on this, on this little rest that it comes with so it's not contacting the table. And now I'm going to you know, get a firm grip on this part, make sure to be mindful where my fingers are, where I'm cutting this. And I'm going to start with the side profile, just like I did with the tabletop cutter. And you can get pretty close. It's not going to be as smooth as the cut from a tabletop cutter. But again, we're just roughing out this piece. We're just roughing out this design. And we're going to come back again with the rasps and sandpaper to do the final shaping. So we just need to remove uh, the, the correct amount of material here. So this is a good cut. This is great. This is good enough for what we're trying to achieve with this part. So we're going to go back to the second side. You might need to adjust your grip or flip your part to find a good grip so that your, your fingers are uh, firmly gripping the piece, but also far away from the wire. And again, please use some kind of respiratory filtration system. Uh, a respirator would be excellent. Also doing this in a well-ventilated place, doing this outside uh, is a necessity. You don't want to be breathing in these fumes. Okay, I've cut the, the second side, and it's time to put my block back together, just like I did the, the first time. And then uh, I'll be able to cut that top view. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky to find a good grip to, to do this part, but it's completely possible. Actually, I'll do it in a couple of different sections. I'm going to start by seeing if I can cut maybe half of this away in a single operation. So I'm going to do maybe half of this ellipse with this particular motion. And I'm going out here and just always be mindful where your fingers are. You don't want to burn yourself. So I'm uh, removing half of it. You can kind of see where this is going. Then I'm going to adjust my grip to see if I can find a place to cut the, the other half off. As smooth of a motion as I can make, not stopping. 
if you feel like you're sort of losing your grip, you can actually cut out of the piece and just remove that section and come back to address the rest. And particularly with this process, with the handheld cutter, you're going to make some mistakes. So you're going to be wanting to have that design give you a little room, make, make sure that you have enough material here at all the sides so that you can make a few mistakes and still be able to get a part that's the, the correct size that you want. So this looks excellent. It's not as smooth as the part that I cut uh, with my uh, table top cutter but it should be great to, to keep shaping and the end result should be pretty much the same. So I just want to remove material here. Uh, and again, now I have my side view and top view cut into my part and I'm ready to do some more uh, advanced shaping. So I'm going to come back with my hot wire actually and uh, cut and chamfer out these corners so that I'm not removing all of that material by using rasps and, and, and sandpaper. I can just do a few cuts here with my hot wire cutter and remove some of the material here in these corners to start rounding off my shape a little bit. My shape is quite organic and flowy so I'm going to have to remove a lot of material. I want to make sure that I remove as much as I can with uh, the hot wire cutter because it's just it's very fast to use. So after drawing all four corners, I've started to round off my shape. I'm starting to get an idea of the, this, this volume that I'm trying to carve as I have it in my sketching and in my head. I'm going to go to the rasp now. I like this type of pointy rasp because it allows me to get into very small radiuses and crevices in my part. Um, and it just gives me a lot more flexibility than the standard rasp you'll find in the hardware store. But and again, you can use those too. It does have a rounded side and a flat side. So you can do both flat and uh, curved surfaces. So I'm going to start with the round side here. And for, for those of you that have used rasp before, you'll notice that I'm using it the wrong way. I'm actually pulling to cut here. These rasps are so sharp that just the, 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 the friction of these little teeth against the surface will remove a certain amount of material. And then if you actually use it the correct way by, by pushing uh, and in a pushing motion, you'll remove a lot more material. So you try try both motions, both both forward and backward, to see what that does. Uh, usually, pulling gives you less resistance; it removes less material. For this small piece uh, and these very fine curves that I'm trying to do, actually, a pulling motion with my rasp is uh, more than good enough to remove uh, material quite fast and give me a pretty smooth surface. Uh, when you're doing this motion, just make sure that you keep, you're, again, mindful where your uh, uh, left hand is in my case, or your right hand if you're a lefty. So make sure you don't stab yourself with your rasp. That would be unadvisable. So be always be safe. Uh, if you can, wear some uh, thin gloves to do this uh, and make sure that you're not um, scraping and uh, point, you know, pinching yourself with this type of tool. So I'm going to go all around with my rasp and just create these organic forms that I'm trying to create um, and just give that an initial surfacing pass uh, and go through you know, top and bottom and all the corners. And uh, I can already starting, I'm already starting to see this uh, piece that I have envisioned that's very flowy and organic. It's always good to have a vacuum around when you're working on blue foam. There's a lot of dust around. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. I particularly like to you know, clean every once in a while because you, know, you just keep producing more. Now I'm going to go back to the smaller piece that I cut in my tabletop hot wire cutter. Um, and I'm going to repeat the same process of going through the, the, the rasp here. with. Uh, I usually tend to use the flat side on... Um, convex surfaces and then the rounded side on concave surfaces so I just flip the rasp around and you know as you practice you'll get a natural feel natural feel of 
when to make that change every time you're, you're shaping. Excellent. So I'm pretty happy with this initial roughing out of these forms with uh, the rasp. And uh, this is a very you know, small family of products of these two little vessels uh, that I am creating are looking quite good. They're complementing each other pretty well. Okay, so going from the rasp, which is very coarse, I'm going to step down to a 80 grit sandpaper. And then the next step from that particular sandpaper is going to be a 220 grit sandpaper and I usually like to fold the sandpapers in half uh, so that I get uh, some grip on the back side against my fingers or gloves and it doesn't slide around that much. So I'm going to start by hitting this part with the 220 uh, sandpaper. If you're doing a flat piece with large surfaces, you want to use a sanding block behind it to, to get a nice flat surface, flat reference. Your fingers are not flat, so if you just use your fingers on a very flat surface, uh, you're not going to get a very nice result. In my case, with this particular form, my fingers are doing a great job at, at just adapting to the contours of this form that I'm trying to shape out. Um, with a 220 grit sandpaper, I'm going to get try, try to get rid of all the gouges and cuts and holes that I've created with the rasp. Um, the rasp is a no, very sharp metal tool going into this very soft foam, so you might end up with imperfections that you need to remove. So the 220 grit, sorry, the 80 grit sandpaper is going to help me remove those uh, big gouges and imperfections and give me a, a semi-smooth result on the surface, which of course I still need to further uh, refine. And I may step up, step up to a 220 grit sandpaper and refine that surface. For this particular model, the 220 grit is going to be enough. It's just a, a way to roughly represent the shape and show its size and show its contours. Uh, if you're going to do a more finished blue foam model, something that you're going to prime and, and paint, maybe you want to step up to perhaps a 400 grit uh, sandpaper. I'll go back to my smaller form with a 220 grit sandpaper and try to refine that form that I've created with the rasp. Then I'm going to step up to the 220 grit and I want to have enough material uh, on my piece before I start the shaping and sanding process so that this final result is the correct size. So that is something that's going to come with practice, but I'm pretty happy with uh, how these two forms are shaping up these two small curvy uh, little vessels. You can do some additional work with some of the other tools that come with a hot wire cutter. There's this long wand that I like to use for representing things like parting lines or creating small creases or channels in my parts. Here I've used it a couple times around this part to create this small uh, feature here for the top of the vessel. This other tool that comes with it, it gets very hot uh, and it removes a lot of material. So if you want to create a hole, some kind of chamber, some kind of um, other feature there very fast, you can do this. It's kind of hard to control. It moves very fast. It removes a lot of material because it gets very hot. Now I've uh, grabbed a popsicle stick and I wrapped some sandpaper around it and used it as a small tool to refine this small feature that I created at the top of my vessels. After I'm happy with that, I'll come back with some 220 grit sandpaper and just make that nice and, and smooth of a transition between the, the, the different surfaces.
Fantastic. So I end up with some great looking prototypes I can put in somebody's hand and show them uh, out of uh, the blue foam, a very simple material I can find pretty much everywhere. So thank you for following and I'll see you next time.